Since this is the first homework solution in this course, I wanted to take a little bit of time to explain the symbols. The green circles, everyone should do, and there will be solutions in these videos. Everyone should try all of the problems with the blue squares. Those problems will be discussed on the forum. The black diamonds are for people who know a little bit more or who want a challenge. These are completely optional and again will be discussed on the forum. The first problem here will call upon the logistic map program that you wrote earlier in this unit. The task in this problem was to generate a trajectory from x equals 0.2, 200 points long, with r equals 2, and then to generate a trajectory using the same r, the same number of points, but a slightly different initial condition. The next task was to plot the absolute value of the difference between those trajectories versus n. Here's the difference. Here I'm generating the n values, setting up a figure, doing the plot. There's the figure. Let's keep that in mind. Then we were supposed to repeat this for r equals 3.4 and r equals 3.72. So I'll do that quickly. Here's that figure. The last task was to do the same thing for r equals 3.72. There's the third plot. The next task was to compare these plots to the ones in the homework handout. and then answer the following questions. So which of these plots corresponds to r equals 2? That was the one that fell off like a stone. That was c. Which of the plots in figure 1 corresponds to r equals 3.4? That was the one that oscillated as it was falling. a. And then the third question, which of the plots in figure 1 corresponds to the plot that we generated with r equals 3.72? That was the chaotic one in b. Now the point of this problem goes back to my example of an eddy in a stream as a metaphor for chaos, and the notion of dropping two wood chips in that eddy very close together and watching how fast they separate. If the attractor is a fixed point and you drop those two wood chips, those two initial conditions, in the basin of attraction of that attractor, both of those initial conditions would be converging to the fixed point attractor, so the absolute value of the difference between them, which is the distance between them, would converge to zero. If the attractor were a periodic orbit, then the two initial conditions would rattle in from two different directions. So the distance between them might oscillate, but eventually they would end up on the same periodic orbit. And then they'd be chasing each other around like two cars on a racetrack, not necessarily exactly opposite each other all the time, because the cars might be going around the corners at different speed. So the distance between them would settle down into a periodic oscillation. Although, as you can see in this case, the difference does converge to zero. If the attractor is chaotic, the two initial conditions will move chaotically through the attractor, and the distance between them will also change chaotically. To answer problem E, you need to generate two trajectories 500 points long with slightly different initial conditions, and look at the last number in each of those trajectories. There are the two trajectories. Looks pretty small to me. The choices in the problem were 0, 0.25, 1, and none of the above. 10 to the minus 17th is pretty darn close to 0, so I would select the first answer. In part f, the idea was to repeat that for r equals 3.4. There's the calculation, and again it looks like the answer is 0. Part g of this problem required a little bit more programming. Here's a 5,000 point trajectory at r equals 3.72. Here's a 5,000 point trajectory from a slightly different initial condition at the same r value. Here's a vector containing an element-wise difference of those two trajectories and with the absolute value taken. And here's the average of the values in that vector. Let's see which of the answers that corresponds to. Looks like that one. The next problem was about extending that calculation out to 500,000. The answer doesn't change a whole lot, but it is a little different. It's 0.2441. The fact that that difference doesn't change very much between 5,000 and 500,000 points is pretty amazing. What that says is that as the initial conditions move around the chaotic attractor, the average distance between them is pretty much the same over 5,000 points or over 500,000 points. That's a consequence of the combination of sensitive dependence on initial conditions and the bounded, patterned, structured nature of a chaotic attractor. In problem two, we went back to using the app. And the task was to generate a 50 point trajectory from x naught equals 0.2 using this very carefully chosen r parameter value. Let's restart the simulation. This doesn't look to me like anything periodic or anything that's a fixed point. I would guess this is chaotic, but there's something very interesting going on here. Look at this little piece and then this little piece. There's some patterns going on there. 
but they're not quite the same. So I would guess that this is a chaotic orbit. In part b of this problem, we're going to watch for a little bit longer and see what happens to see if it's really chaotic or if it's going to settle down to something. With this app, you can watch an ongoing process of iterations by clicking Start Animation. And I still see that little arrowhead kind of thing coming through. And then things look like they go chaotic in between. The re reoccurrence of that pattern makes me suspect we're near a bifurcation point. Aha! Now things have gone periodic. Now I'm going to stop the animation so we can count and see what kind of period it is. Looks like it repeats every 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's a 9 cycle. So the answer is this one.